so I was asked to watch a video of Virdas on YouTube. He seems to be a comedian and his words may be perceived as a joke, but I prefer to back my words using facts, data and statistics. Even if I was a comedian, I would never use the term to Indias. Even if I wanted to criticize India, I would never use the term to Indias. Want to know why? This term sounds divisive. It clearly divides India into two. The term seems to nourish or even create the idea of division in India. And that can hurt India. My name is Carolina and I am from Europe. People from my Europe went to torture, loot, Christianize and enslave the people living in other parts of the world. Many who were enslaved were not even considered humans by those Europeans. But what an irony that today Europeans preach about human rights. Yes, before they didn't even consider them as human, but now they teach them about human rights. I come from Europe where countries like Finland, Sweden and Norway teach the world the importance of self-determination or freedom, while they themselves are referred to as colonial states, even today. Yes, this massive land was seized or taken over by the so-called icons of human rights and freedom. I come from Europe which got richer through slavery and from looted wealth, and yet even today many of our leaders hesitate to acknowledge our brutal colonial history. Yes, there is this cleverly projected fake or shiny image of Europe that many of you are familiar with, but beneath that shiny surface there is also the real Europe that they seem to be hiding from you and even from us. I come from Europe where, due to hunger, children in the UK have been forced to eat toilet paper and scavenge trash bins at night for food. And yet, millions of pumpkins are simply wasted each year in the celebrations of Halloween. I come from Europe where 12% of women in France have been raped, 11% of Swedish women have been victims of attempted rape, and where almost 10% of women in Norway have been raped at least once in their lifetime. Yes, there are millions of female rape survivors in Europe with their millions of untold stories. But that's not all. Europeans' lokkiakahenge attitude and many other factors contribute to massive underreporting of rapes. Besides that, there is victim shaming, poor prosecution rates, poor conviction rates. The horror continues. I come from Europe where many men hire naked maids to clean their homes and where many of these young women are sexually abused. I come from Europe where many of our women are being auctioned online, eBay style, to the highest bidder. This takes place openly in Germany, a nation that has also been referred to as the Brothal of Europe. I come from Europe whose universities promote themselves in other parts of the world to bring more and more new foreign students, while many of our existing female students in Europe sell their filthy and dirty used underwear to men who use it for their sexual satisfaction. European universities brag about how great the college life in Europe is, yet many students here work as prostitutes to cover their college fees or other expenditures. I come from Europe which brags about the importance of child safety, but it was also found hosting 89% of all child sexual abuse content. Here are the top 10 countries. The Netherlands has 71%. I come from Europe which is a source of hundreds of thousands of sex tourists who have purchased sexual services from minors and others abroad. And yes, this also includes our European female sex tourists who go to Africa or elsewhere for their sexual satisfaction. I come from Europe which gave birth to activist groups like PI, which openly campaigned for the public acceptance of pedophilia and for changes in the law to allow adults to have sex with children. I come from Europe which preaches the importance of global diversity, but its famous city, Lausanne, allowed a gathering where Christians from around the world united with Billy Graham, the man who openly worked on the total evangelization of the world, something that may sound radical or against our global diversity. I come from Europe where we present ourselves as global role models in education, but have we done enough to teach this history of Europe and Christianity? Why this colonial amnesia in the Swedish education system about Sami people? Why this colonial amnesia in the German education system? 
I come from Europe where to maintain racial purity, thousands of people were brutally sterilized. And of course, during all those years, the ceremonies to award Nobel Prizes and the Nobel Peace Prize were taking place in countries that were running racial purity programs. I come from Europe where our leaders act as if they are the saviors of our planet, but then we dump millions of tons of toxic waste in our fjords. We have dumped billions of liters of wastewater, including human excrement, in places where people go to swim. And of course, we also dump our waste in poorer and developing countries. We act as if we are the global leaders when it comes to the protection of the environment, but then we continue drilling for more fossil fuels in the middle of a climate emergency, even in the fragile ecosystem of the Arctic. We consume goods that cause pollution in other countries, and to hide our environmental crimes, we can also use many clever tricks in the methodologies or metrics. And of course, many of us get very uncomfortable when others talk about our massive historical emissions. Yes. I know that the Western world, which ranks highest in the global meat consumption, also brags about its concern for animals. Yes, I know that during the times when we Europeans made you admire us for our love for animals and animal rights, we were also running cruel fur industries, killing millions of fur animals, and were behind the brutal killings of thousands of minke whales, many of whom were even pregnant. I come from Europe where interdenominational marriages between Christians are still looked down upon and where many Christians discriminate against other Christians, even in their graveyard. I come from Europe where Christians killed millions of their own fellow Christians who were of different Christian denominations, causing brutal atrocities and exodus. I come from Europe which performed humiliating virginity tests on migrant Indian subcontinent women. And as far as our Western caste system is concerned, how about the brutal exploitation, wage theft and sexual abuse of migrant workers who clean public toilets in Europe? I come from Europe where we boast about our love for secularism and inclusivity, but then what about the privilege to Christianity that we give through the presence of official state churches? Why in my Europe are there no official national public holidays for Muslim festivals in countries like Germany and Sweden, which have such large Muslim populations? Why do Islamic weddings have no legal value in many parts of Europe, even though Muslims have been a part of European history and our society for many centuries? Yes, you may have seen the Indian Bollywood star Shah Rukh Khan dancing in Switzerland for his movie song with a smile on his face. But did you also know about the formal non-recognition of Islam, ban on minarets and the so-called burqa ban in Switzerland? Now some of you may wonder, how come I never knew about all this that lies beneath the shiny image of European nations? Well, it was revealed that the Swedish Travel and Tourism Council helps organize some 600 journalist visits a year, which result in some 6,000 articles. So 600 journalists and 6,000 articles just for Sweden. It seems quite clear that Sweden is also worried about Lokia Kahenge, right? But can deceitful or clever use of our media soft power hide our crimes forever? And for how long will we be able to maintain our cleverly projected shiny image? Honestly speaking, I love Europe, and that is why I am concerned about Europe. Is it right to say that Indians should continue to welcome good-hearted criticism, but also have the right to reject ill-intentioned vilification and the negative stereotyping of their nation? After all, there is nothing wrong with being self-critical, but citizens of the formerly colonized nations should self-introspect if they are still emotionally colonized or emotionally enslaved. I still wonder why would anyone use a divisive term, to Indias, why? Yes, there can be multiple sides of India, but as foreigners, we should remember there is only one India.